Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you my Lakeview screening room. It's been four years since I've started. When I started, the whole basement was unfinished. There was a giant cave underneath the garage, just concrete bunker, and with a lot of patience, planning, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I managed to turn it into a theater over the last four years. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've just wanted to throw some paint on the wall and put a projector in and be done and start watching movies. But I think all of the planning and the time and the effort has really paid off. And so I'd love to share it with you. Let's go take a look. So the basement was a project in its own right. This is the kitchenette in the basement, and it's situated just outside the theater. And so we can use this as kind of a snack bar. Uh, we've got an old fashioned stovetop popcorn maker and some buckets and some nice stools here. People can sit at and enjoy snacks. And then if we move along here to the right, you can see the entrance to the Lakeview screening room. And most of the wood that you'll see used here is a walnut. I had this uh, sign uh, laser cut locally, and I put LED lights behind it. And there is a keypad here that controls the lights, and there's an identical one uh, for the lighting controls actually inside the theater as well. And then you can see through the double doors here, the uh, movie poster is kind of peeking out at you. So let's go into this space and see what it looks like. So here we have the vestibule. Uh, this space serves as isolation from the rest of the basement. Uh, it keeps the sound in the theater and out of the theater. We've got these movie posters. They're just the traditional uh, backlit movie posters. They're not uh, video screens or anything. Uh, but I think it nice, gives a nice uh, mood to the space. All right, so this unit here is called the Graphic Eye QS. It's made by Lutron. And this controls all of the lighting as well as the uh, masking for the theater screen. And it's really kind of cool. It has six zones, so there are six uh, separate lighting circuits in the theater here. And the cool thing is you can set every lighting circuit to a certain level and then you can save it here so you've got multiple presets um, so if you want to do a casual movie the lights dim and you can kind of make out that the sconces are on a little bit as well as the uh, countertop lighting but the screen is dark um, so that's casual movie if you want to listen to music can adjust that and the lights come on in the room but the lights stay off over the screen and so the idea there is you can browse through your songs and uh, pick a new song or whatever you want to do uh, and then all on turns everything up and you see the screen there uh, gets lighting on the stage and then I've got uh, dark is pretty much everything off except for the stair lighting and um, then all off, of course. So I've also got the masking here. So if I push one of these buttons, um, say I go to scope, you can see our screen gets bigger. I can press 16 by nine. So that changes the aspect ratio according to the content we're watching. Another cool thing about this guy is that I have him wired up to the control that's outside the theater. So you can see out there, there's another one that just mirrors the exact same controls. It's kind of cool. 
And I've also got it wired up to a device in my cabinet here. So this control uh, allows me to interface with the Graphic Eye lighting system and program it. So I have some cool things like when the movie comes on, the lights turn down and uh, stuff like that. So let me just go through the six zones really quickly and then we'll move on. So this first zone here are the uh, lights here, the pendant lights that go over the countertop. This is zone one. Zone two. Zone two uh, does the clouds, the sound clouds above in the ceiling, and also the spotlights that all face down. So we've got spotlights here. This is where a significant amount of planning comes into play to be able to um, set up all the light zones how you want. And you know, you always think about maybe you should have done something differently. This one is the sconces. You can see the sconces go up and down. Nice. Number four, I believe, is the stair lighting. So let's. Look at the stair there, yep. And every stair has lights for safety when you're watching a movie. And zone five. Zone five, I believe, are the stage lights, yes. Zone five is the stage lighting. And then zone six. Another nice thing about this unit is that you can set each zone to be a different type of load. So if you've got fluorescent lighting, or if you've got um, LED lighting, or halogen, or like my uh, like my theater uh, signs here, uh, this is just a simple on-off instead of a fade to black. So on, off. So whereas these other ones do fading, uh, this last one is set up as just an on-off load and you know you can play with these however you want uh, and then you press the preset and it will just take you back to the preset so that is the graphic eye and i really like it um yeah So the next stop on the theater train, uh, under the countertop here, I've got all of my audio and video equipment. So it was important that this equipment is all very silent, and so I bought equipment that doesn't have fans. Um, the bottom here I have the Anthem AVM70. Uh, this is a preprocessor, and uh, I use that to take the sound and shuffle it over here to my power amps. Um, we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but the HDMI goes in here and surround sound goes out to the amplifiers. Uh, above that I have a Blu-ray player, Panasonic. Um, and then above that I have what's called a Lumigen Radiance Pro. And the purpose of this is to do dynamic tone mapping for um, HDR. And basically, uh, that's a fancy term for adjusting the brightness automatically to what my projector can handle. Uh, so it will take a, an HDR, um, in, a, an HDR video source, and it will adjust it so that um, it plays optimally on my limited projector uh, brightness range. Uh, it also does some cool things like uh, it outputs the video aspect and frame rate, which allows me to adjust the screen mask and the lighting in the room. So I read signals off of that to do the automation. Uh, <clears throat> above that, we have an Anthem M1. This powers my subwoofers. 
and I have four 15 inch subwoofers built into the riser. So I'm really happy with that. It actually provides a lot of tactile feedback. So when there's a crash, when there's an earthquake, when there's an explosion, uh, you really feel that in the seats and it's a little bit better than uh, just having a, you know, the, the vibration units that sit in your chairs um, because it's actually um, the sound coming off the subwoofer as well, uh, resonating the ground below you. I think this does 2000 watts uh, at the, uh, with the speakers that I have. And then above that, I have a power conditioner. It has these cool little lights that you can pull out um, to see your equipment. Uh, over here, I've got another power conditioner, a uh, Furman unit. And then I've got an MCA 525, which is a five channel power amplifier. Uh, 225 watts per channel, I think. Another 525. And then a 325. So the 325 does the front three speakers, uh, the center channel, left and right. And then this one does, I believe, the right side of the room. So there are five surround sound speakers on the right side of the room. Another five on the left for a total of 13 channels plus my subwoofers. So it's a pretty beefy unit, and I've been really happy with this. Uh, you might say, well, how do you put all of this under your countertop? Well, I will say this countertop gets a little toasty. You could probably throw some pizzas on there and it would keep them warm. Uh, but I built these cabinets with uh, open screen, so it lets the air flow through. I also uh, designed it with there's actually a big hole in the floor underneath the units here. And that allows for cool air to come through the slot and convection to lift it up as the hot air rises. It's going to suck cool air here and then it will come out the screen because there's nowhere else for the hot air to go. And I also built some fans into the bottom of that just in case I needed them. Uh, but so far it's been really great. It hasn't, they haven't overheated. Uh, they've done really well there and it's totally silent. So. I think the natural convection uh, cooling has really, really worked. So let's talk speakers. These are the Paradigm Elite E80s. And in the front, I have the Paradigm Elite E7s. And I chose these because they have a fairly high sensitivity and they're also in a slim form factor. And I needed those two things for the size of the room and the design that I wanted uh, to go for. So these surround channels have an 8-inch woofer and a 1-inch tweeter. And I have six of those go around the room. And then in the front, I have the E7s. And they have 8-inch woofers and a 6.5-inch uh, woofer as well. And then the 1-inch tweeter. And they have 95 decibel sensitivity. Uh, they're an 8 ohm package and they're only three and a half inches deep and they come in a they have a box enclosure that goes inside the wall one of the standard construction methods for home theaters is to build what they call a baffle wall uh, where you actually build a false wall maybe two feet in front of your regular wall and then you can stuff that with speakers and because of my design i wanted something i wanted the theater to be as big as possible and I wanted the screen to be as large as possible. One of the main tenets of my design um, is that I wanted to go for scale. Um, I didn't want to have, you know, a 70 inch screen or an 80 inch screen. I wanted a little bit of scale um, to kind of give that wow factor for the theater room. So I didn't want to lose two feet uh, of space uh, bringing the screen closer and making it a little bit smaller to compensate. Uh, so to do that, I built the speakers into the walls and into the columns, actually. Um, and so that's why I chose these speakers. I've also got four Atmos speakers in the ceiling, and they are matching uh, Paradigm brand speakers as well. And I've got one behind the screen for the center channel. Now for the subs, I opted to go with infinite baffle subs that are built into the riser. I've got four 15 inch subs here and 
they shake this riser like crazy. Um, it can actually be a little bit <laughs> unsettling uh, when you're watching a movie and it feels like the room is going to shake apart. Uh, the lower seats here do not sit on the riser. And because of that, uh, they don't get nearly as much of the shaking action. So people that come can choose if they want the tactile feedback or if they want the uh, calmer experience. So those are my speakers. So moving along to the projector, this is the heart and soul of any home theater. I have the JVC RS4500K. It's a laser projector, 3000 lumens. And the reason I chose this one is for the brightness. Uh, I have a fairly large screen as far as home theaters go. And so I needed a decent amount of brightness to get uh, a good HDR-like picture. And the other reason I bought it is uh, because it's laser. It's very low maintenance. The color accuracy will remain constant. Don't have to worry about uh, changing bulbs or anything like that. So on the flip side, the thing is a beast. It is, I wanna say it's about 90 pounds and it's really large. This box is about three feet wide, 20 inches tall, and um, it's about 40 inches deep, I believe. It has a slide out shelf here which allows me to work on this beast of a projector uh, when I need to plug in cables in the back and whatnot. So that's really handy and it requires a decent amount of cooling so in the back you can't really see it but in the back I've got two six inch ducts going in for fresh air and those actually feed through the corners. I've got um, vents that go through the soffit and then into the back for fresh air. And the hot air actually comes out these other six inch ducts here. So I've got four six inch uh, ducts that uh, maintain the climate control inside this box. And the projector itself has a bunch of temperature sensors that I'm able to monitor and make sure that um, it's under good cool operation. Um, so the box also keeps things quiet uh, as well as isolated uh, as far as heat goes. And I've got a little uh, thermostat here that controls a fan. There's a fan inside the soffit over here and it ramps up the fan a little bit. Uh, the soffit is insulated so you don't hear the fan uh, under normal circumstances. And yeah, it keeps things nice and cool. Uh, I've also got this anamorphic lens. Uh, if you think about your standard uh, widescreen movie, you generally have black bars on the top and bottom of your screen. And those are wasted pixels. Those are pixels that are being backlit uh, that aren't being used. And that's resolution that you're losing. Uh, so with the Lumigen video processor, it actually stretches the image to fill um, that whole display area. So those black bars get totally filled and totally used and the brightness is taken advantage of. But what you're left with then is uh, a picture that's distorted. Uh, every, everybody looks tall and kind of squished uh, horizontally. And the picture, the picture is actually too wide for the aspect ratio. Um, so then what you do is you throw the anamorphic lens in front. And what that does is it optically corrects um, what you've done with stretching that image out to fill the whole display. And so it balances it out back to the normal aspect ratio. And so the combination of the Lumigen video processor combined with the optical correction uh, allows you to use all of the brightness of your projector for your widescreen movies. And it allows you to use all of the pixels of your projector as well. It's a little bit dusty, 
but uh, they say you don't want to spend a lot of time over polishing it. Uh, it can actually rub the finish off. So uh, a little bit of dust here and there is expected and it's okay. Um, occasionally I'll, I'll uh, blow it off with compressed air or something. I've got a uh, window here for the picture to go through in the box, of course. And um, that's anti-glare glass special kind of glass and then I've got these toy box hinges that keep the lid open. If I uh, pull that little elbow down it will start to close on its own. So that's the projector. You can see that the uh, door to that closes nice and softly. Um, really happy with the picture and the brightness. Now I was talking about the Lumagen earlier and the, the Lumagen knows the brightness range of my projector and so it's able to take dark scenes and scale them up to what my projector can handle. So you know traditionally with projectors dark scenes are a really tough spot because you lose a lot of detail, can't really see what's going on in the shadows and um, the Lumagen dynamically pumps up that, that uh, range and allows you to see what's going on in those dark pictures. And then during bright scenes uh, it keeps things from washing out. Um, a lot of times in a bright scene, you just get white and that's it. Um, and so it provides a lot of gradient and dynamic uh, adjustability scene by scene. Uh, so you get the most out of your projector and a nice picture of the pops. So let's talk about the screen for a second. This is a Stewart screen. It's a Studio Tech 130 G4. And it's perforated, so it's acoustically transparent. Um, it's micro perforated, so you can't make out the dots unless you're about six feet uh, away from it. And so that provides a way for sound to come through the screen and allow for the audio and the dialogue to sound like it's actually coming from the people on the screen. Um, it's got a little bit of gain. It's a 1.3 gain, which means you get a little bit of extra brightness out of it without any sort of hot spotting. Um, it's a really nice screen. It's worked well for me. Uh, I built the frame on my own using um, aluminum extrusions. And I've got a whole set of build videos for that, as well as the automated masking. I did all of that myself so that when you um, when the aspect ratio of the picture changes, the, the screen actually grows and shrinks. So that's really cool and I'm really happy how the automated masking turned out and uh, how the screen just kind of fits there perfectly. It's pretty much maxed out the width of my theater um, aside from the corner columns there. Uh, that's pretty much the largest I could make it. So very pleased with that. The seating in this theater is from Palliser it's the model called Vertex, and they look pretty nice. Um, the, this is full leather. Um, it's a 3000 series leather, and this style is called Solana. The color is Coco. Um, it's got the full hand stitching. Um, and they're pretty, pretty comfortable. Uh, for the most part, the construction is just your standard theater seating uh, with the removable tray, which is very glossy and fingerprint prone. Um, but it's got a removable tray table and the little accessory grommet there. Um, and then there's a place to store your tray table or your remotes or whatever in the armrest. Um, as far as controls go, uh, it's got the normal recline. Um, and back, but it's also got headrest, which is nice because when you're reclined, you want to be able to kind of put your head up into a comfortable position. So you've got, got the headrest and also the lumbar support. Uh, then it's got a memory setting where you hold this down. It will, um, remember all of the configurations and go back to that position. Um, Finally, we've got LEDs, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, they're more of a distraction than anything during the movie. Uh, they light up the whole room. Um, 
but it can be nice to kind of see what you're what you're doing. Uh, otherwise, it's got the uh, USB charger there, uh, which I use to charge my remote. I opted for a configuration where the two in the middle are a straight configuration, and then the ones on the outside are the curved configuration, which gives it kind of a slight curvature, um, but nothing too crazy. Uh, wrinkles show up in the leather a lot more in the video. Anyway, those are the seats and uh, they worked out pretty well. So let's talk about sound treatments for a minute. In a theater, you don't want the sound too dead. You don't want to absorb all of the sound in the room except for what's immediately coming off the speakers. But you also don't want a lot of echo because it will keep you from locating where the sound is coming from and that sort of defeats the purpose of surround sound. So you want nice clarity, you want to be able to hear the sound, but you also don't want to absorb it everywhere. And so most people who are paying attention to sound design in their theater, they're going to have a mix of diffusion and absorption and not too much of either. So what I have here, all of the brown fabric is actually a fiberglass sound panel with fabric over the top of it. So there's two inches of that all around the walls as a wainscoting. And then I have these panels here called diffu diffusers. And diffusers, uh, there are many different designs, but this design here has different channels that are different depths. And so like this one is kind of a medium depth. This one is really deep. And this one's just a little bit deep. And what happens, if you think about sound as like a pool ball on a pool table and it's bouncing off the wall, um, it can go in one direction or with the diffuser, it actually spreads out in multiple directions. And the depth of those channels adjusts the direction that the sound bounces off at. So what that does is it, it provides a spaciousness to the room and keeps you from being able to pinpoint exactly where the walls are as the sound bounces off the walls. So it provides a roominess to the space. And you see these kinds of things in uh, professional theaters, in auditoriums. If you go look around, you'll see odd shaped designs. And it's, they're not just architectural, they're actually there to bounce sound in different directions. So I've got four of these large diffusers. They're about seven feet tall. In all of the soffits here, I've got fabric and I've got at least four inches of dense fiberglass sheets uh, underneath each of those panels. The panels are removable so I can do maintenance to the uh, wiring and ductwork and whatever else is in the soffits. Uh, but those provide base traps and base traps are, you can think of them as just mega absorbers for base that collects in the corners of your room. Uh, and it keeps the base from having dead spots in your room as well. So I've got base absorbers all through there. And the riser itself is filled with fiberglass. So it acts as a base absorber to some degree as well. 
And then on the ceiling here, I've got these sound clouds and they're just boxes with fiberglass sheets inside them as well. And that just keeps the echoes and reflections off the ceiling from being too strong and overwhelming. I've also got the standard fiberglass immediately behind the theater screen. And so those are all of the sound treatments in my room. So speaking of construction, when I started, this room was just a big concrete shell, 12-inch uh, thick concrete walls. Uh, the room was 12 foot 4 inches tall, uh, about 20 feet this way, and about 28 feet um, going the long ways. Um, and it was just concrete, uh, nothing else. Um, the drop down from ground level into this room is about 4 feet. And that posed a little bit of a challenge uh, in designing the riser. Uh, I had to put some extra steps in. It was a little bit deeper than I think I had hoped it would be. Um, ideally, everything would be up maybe two steps, and this um, landing here would be at ground level. Um, but I ended up being able to work it out with the right number of steps and not make it look too weird. Uh, but it is a big riser. You go up two feet to the first tier there, and then you go up another 16 inches or so to the um, countertop area. So I did just standard two by four wall construction. Um, a lot of people, they do like two layers of drywall or they'll decouple the two by four studs from the concrete walls. Um, with all of the concrete, I found that it's pretty well isolated from the rest of the house. I don't hear sound coming in and you don't hear uh, the theater sound coming out. So it worked out pretty well. Uh, a lot of people are concerned um, in a room like this that you get a lot of base that just gets trapped inside this concrete shell. And so the idea is that decoupling the walls from the concrete and not anchoring the, the wooden walls to the concrete um, allows for some extra base absorption. Um, I've got so much base trapping and the risers full of fiberglass, I don't find it a problem. So regarding construction of the riser, I actually went out of my way and got 20 foot long eye joists and I ran them the long way uh, across. I did that on this tier and on that tier. And you can see that if you look at the construction photos. Uh, the reason I did that is because I wanted to provide a little bit of suspension and I didn't want to tightly couple and make a uh, super crazy sturdy riser. Uh, I wanted something that would give tactile feedback. And I feel like that really paid off. If, if you walk across it, there's really no noticeable bounce or anything like that. Um, so it's still fairly sturdy. At the same time, there's a big long, uh, kind of suspended span here that um, really is able to vibrate when uh, the bass kicks in. Uh, the riser itself is still, it's full of insulation as I mentioned, so that keeps the resonance from getting out of control. Uh, it gives really nice tight uh, tactile response and I like how that turned out. The soffits um, are about 12 inches deep and 28 inches wide. So it's 28 inches coming out from the wall. They go all the way around the room. And the undersides, like I mentioned before, are soft fabric uh, panels. Each panel was custom made. 
uh, by me by hand to fit the specific space that they sit in, which was a bit of a trick in these corners. Uh, took me a few days to get each and every one of these panels custom fit. Uh, they're attached in there via some strong magnets. You really have to tug at them to get them down. But, uh, you know, I've got some wiring and things like that up there. So it's really nice to be able to pull those down if I ever need to. And this one is special. It contains a mini split, a ducted mini split, which is the heating and cooling for the room. And it's very quiet. You hardly even notice it in most cases. And uh, you can pull this, this panel down and get to it to change the filter or whatnot. So that's nice. The uh, tile here is a Valentino marble. And uh, I like how it turned out. I, th I like how the grain of the marble uh, kind of mimics the wood a little bit. And, you know, <laughs> it's really unorthodox to have uh, tile in a theater, I know. But um, I just sort of had this vision that um, having stone in the room would kind of make it feel uh, professional, like a professional room in some way, like the uh, like you're in the Empire State Building or something like that. Um, I just thought it would be a unique touch, and it's well above your ear level. So you know, I'm I'm standing here on the second uh, second row seating here, and the the line here is well above my ears. Um, so. You don't get a lot of echo. It doesn't really color the sound of the room too much. And if anything, it keeps the room from feeling too dead. Um, so I like how it turned out. I would do it, totally do it again. So that was a, that was a risk, but it, it ended up worth it in, in the end. The wood here is all walnut and it's just a waxed walnut. Uh, so a wax finish um, has some bonuses. You can always uh, touch it up really easily whenever you want. Um, and it's kind of a matte finish. So, or maybe, I mean, there's a little bit of a reflection off of it at times, but um, it's really uh, not very glossy, and which is good for the, the theater itself. And actually, some of this wood, I haven't totally waxed at all yet. So there's a little bit of work to do. I haven't filled in every single nail hole. Um, so if you've noticed some nail holes and things as I've gone through, um, that's on my to-do list, I guess. <laughs> if you look at these columns here, you can see they actually sort of waterfall. So the grain comes down. I'm going to move my hand so you can actually see a little bit. Um, the grain actually comes down and like waterfalls down the column, um, which is a nice, interesting touch. I had some feedback from a forum member when I was designing this that I shouldn't have the door uh, uh, open up right into the room and immediately have a step down because people might trip, you know, or uh, misstep as they come into the room. So I pushed the door back two feet and there's now a little landing as you walk in, uh, which I really like how that turned out. So I appreciated that feedback.
So I'm going to give you a feel for what it's like to sit down in my theater and watch a movie. Like I said, I don't have a ton of automation here, but I do have the Harmony remote. And I've got a watch streaming and a watch Blu-ray. And I've just kind of coordinated the startup of the equipment. And then everything else is pretty much just Apple TV. Um, and then it does have, I do have some serial, uh, some serial magic going on that will, um, adjust the aspect ratio for the screen masking and it will also adjust the lighting. I'm going to start it. We'll resume. Should see the lights go down again. You can hear the masking. I feel a little bit like a bootlegger <laughs> recording this. Um, so some things I'll point out about this is that the screen wall itself is super black. You get a really nice, uh, really nice thick black border um, surrounding the screen. A nice sharp edge there. And then you do get a little bit of bloom on the sides, you know, where the tile is and where the wood is um, on the side walls there. But I actually kind of like that because it adds some ambiance. Uh, you know, when someone is walking through a room and there's a really bright light or something like that and they shine it, it actually lights up your wall. And so it almost creates some presence there um, and feels like almost like they're shining the light into your room. Um, so I don't mind that one bit, really. Um, so obviously we can't watch this whole thing. And... Uh, just copyright issues and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit. And when I exit, you should see the lights kick up automatically um, by themselves. And then the screen goes back to 16 by nine. And we're ready to pick another movie. Well, thank you for taking the tour with me. I think I've finally run out of things to talk about. That was exhausting. Uh, if you're still watching, hopefully I answered all of your questions. If not, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I hope to see you in your theater build. Now I think I'm going to watch a movie, and I'll see you later.